<laughs> we, we have Terry Moore and Ann Jeffries, and we're going to do an interview. And, uh, um, okay. So, Hiker, I started at ten, but I found out that Ann started uh, in show business at five. Oh, see now her bio says that she started two years before you, but she was born before you. Yes. <laughs> so. I hope so. The first question we ask, uh, I want to ask is, you were born in Glendale, California, so the trip to Hollywood was not a very distant one. No. But you were brought up in a Mormon family. Right. And I wonder uh, how you, was the trip physically a short one, but maybe because of your family background and everything, but was it a long trip to get to Hollywood? Although you started at, what, 12 or 11? No, uh, I made my first picture at 11. I got the role when I was 10, but we didn't start shooting until I was 11. And I would have started at 4, but I got the measles. So my career was put off. <laughs> I didn't get another chance. And how it happened was the neighbor of ours sent my picture into a casting magazine, and they called me. She wanted her daughter to be in movies, and she wasn't interested, so the neighbor sent mine in, and I was called for a casting call by ca uh, Central Casting, and there were 500 other little girls, and they picked six of us, screen tested us, and I got the role. And they wanted to know if I could horseback ride standing up, and I said, of course. <laughs> and it was the late uh, Washington's birthday, and I had four days to run out to Burbank and go to the riding stables there and learn how to ride bareback. And of course, I loved it. I mean, kids aren't afraid of anything. And I played Walter Brennan's granddaughter. You played with, uh, Liz, what, reading both of your bios, you've played with everybody. Yes, <laughs> yes. Everybody. If, if, if I didn't play with them, I dated them. <laughs> <laughs> or married. Or married them. <laughs> and uh, am I right? You got an Academy Award nomination when you were, what, 14? No, I was uh, 21. 21. Mm-hmm. And for camp, come back, little Sheba. Excellent. All right. Um, I just, of course, I've got here some stuff that we got from. Of course, that we'll explain the purpose that you were brought to Tampa, which was uh, you're going to be given an award tonight from yes. the Gasparilla Film Festival, a Lifetime Achievement Award. And I was, I'm very glad that they brought you ladies to Tampa, and uh, we get to see you. And, and I want to thank Joshua Lee Patton, who was a, very instrumental in getting me here, and I really appreciate what he did. In 1949 was the biggest year for you, uh, and that was because you did uh, this movie, and I got some posters here, uh, Mighty Joe Young. Yes. I got some posters, some yes. copies of the posters, which was, I understand, the second largest grossing film in all of 1949. Right. And, uh, and I actually just... shot it in 47 and 48, but it came out in 49. So one of your first loves was a giant gorilla? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> No comment. <laughs> right. A giant gorilla. And also, that's the year I fell in love with and married Howard Hughes, who was six foot, nearly six foot four, so also a giant man. <laughs> was he hairy? Yeah, but was he what? <laughs> hairy. No. No, 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 no. He was French and Welch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did you ever, uh, you made pitches for Howard Hughes? Uh, he saw, he uh, saw a the movie, the, my first grown-up movie, which was Return of October, opposite Glenn Ford. I was 18 years old, and um, yeah, I had my first kiss, and I, I was still such a kid, just out of high school. And, you know, we didn't have TV or anything in, in those days, and kids didn't grow up so quickly. And Howard saw that. I played an orphan, and he was, felt he was an orphan because he lost his parents very young. And he said, I'm going to marry that girl. What has she done recently? And they said, she's made a movie with a gorilla, Mighty Joe Young, for RKO. So what did he do? He bought RKO. They hadn't released the movie yet, so he could meet me. And that's how he happened to meet me. But uh, my parents, of course, would not allow me to go out with him. And my school teacher said, we'll have him to the house and let him see how out of his league he is. So he would come to the house for dinner, and he'd help me wash the dishes and things like that. And um, he started inviting us to the studio, and uh, uh, to Goldwyn Studios, because we didn't have DVDs or anything. You saw them on, uh, on what is it, 38 millimeter? 35. 35 millimeter. And so we'd see movies there, and we all became friends. And I found that my, uh, well, then when I'd get home from my dates, 
uh, I, he would call me and we would talk until uh, hmm, three and four in the morning. It was just fascinating because and he had dated Ava and Rita and Lana and all these glamorous women that I was just thrill, you know, thrilled with and he would, I'd love to hear all his stories and I found that I was rushing home from my dates to talk to him so my boyfriend at the time I told him he said why don't you go out with him I said are you kidding never and he said why not and I said well, no and he said why and I thought why well, maybe so and so I started dating him that's how it came about and I fell madly in love and I will love him always can you tell us the story uh, which oh incidentally just so that everyone knows Terry Moore wrote an excellent book uh, The Beauty and the Billionaire uh, which I shall finish reading when I get home. It's and even if I say so myself, uh, Hiker, it is an excellent book. And uh, everyone who knew Howard, Cary Grant and Greg Baltzer, they said that's the only book that epitomizes him, that tells the truth about him, that it's really what he was like. All the others were written by people who n never laid eyes on him or who worked for him, and he kept a distance between those who worked for him. So he had two distinct lives. Yes. A personal life and a business life, and he never mixed them. Never. And he always taught me never dip the pen in the office ink. So um, believe it or not, I think I'm one of the few people who never had an affair with anyone I ever worked with. That's a crew, star, anyone. He taught me that very early, and it, it's, it's, paid, it's paid off. I'm friends with all my leading men. And you're in... You developed with Howard Hughes, you would talk to him for hours on the phone. Yes. And you developed a, a, a fun little thing that where you never said goodbye. No, we always did the alligator love call. I made a picture here in Tarpon Springs, and that was in Silver Springs where the alligators were with Ross Allen. And I learned the alligator love call, which was, oh, oh, oh. And you can do that, and the alligators would come from all over, and they would lasso them and catch the alligators. And so he thought that was so adorable. He always wanted me to give him the alligator love call before I went to sleep. Excellent. You came to Florida and made several films, uh, and uh, one of them was Beneath the Twelve Mile Reef. Yes. And you made that a little later. Yes. And uh, how many times have you come to Florida and made films? Well, I made, um, I made uh, Beneath the Twelve Mile Reef. I made um, The Barefoot Mailman here with Robert Cummings and Jerome Cortland. And uh, he was the boyfriend I was going with when I met Howard. And uh, uh, another reason we spent some time together is he invited uh, Kojo, as we called Jerome Cortland, uh, and myself to go um, flying with him. And I said no, and Kojo said, kick me under the table and said yes. And he was six foot five, and he said, I want to play Howard you know, Hughes. So he started taking us flying, too. And then later he taught me to fly, and I became the third woman in the world to check out in jet airplanes thanks to him and being taught by him. Wow, that was, that must have been very, you actually flew a jet airplane, now that I haven't read about. Yes, I did, and, and in um, 84 I jumped with the 82nd Airborne. I love the Air Force, I love planes, That's, Howard and I had so much in common because I love aviation, I love to fly, and, I, and he loved motion pictures as much as I did. In fact, he used to love to do my scenes with me and practice with me. If he hadn't been the great genius innovator that he was, I think he would have made one hell of an actor. And I guess 1984 must have been a major year for you. You jumped out of an airplane in 1984, uh, published your book in 1984, and decided to pose for Playboy in 1984. Yes, in 1984, <laughs> and uh, I produced a movie with my late husband, uh, Beverly Hills Bratz, which uh, starred Martin Sheen and myself. And it was a pretty good movie, and I'm real proud of it. Now, did Hef give you a call, or was it your idea to...? Um, I think he gave me a call. He, he had tried to get me on the cover mm -hmm. since the very first Playboy, the very first one, and my father had thrown him out of the house. He'd come to the house himself. My dad threw him out of the house. And uh, so he had wanted to all along, and my publicist came to me, and he said, look, if uh, they want to do a story on you and they will want to take pictures and they will let you see the pictures and you can have all of them, you know, if you don't like them and uh, you could approve them all. And my late husband, he said, look, what can it hurt? If nothing else, we can cut them off from here and have great headshots. So
So I went there, and he had the best photographer, the best makeup people I've ever seen. In 1984, they did no retouching. It was too expensive. They didn't have uh, uh, the uh, equipment they have today, so they didn't retouch. And my husband called. I was too embarrassed to go see them. He said, come and see them. You're going to love them. Well, they were the best pictures I'd ever had taken in my life because I'd always been the girl with the animals. I made pictures with animals. I made outdoor <laughs> movies. <laughs> They never glamorized me. And I was so thrilled with them. I said, go ahead. And almost all the pictures inside are the ones we did um, on that shoot, that on the tryout shoot. And, and, and we you had your clothes on, too. That was a real difference. Yeah, yeah. I had, she looks yeah, good, too. Thank you. you. Awfully good. Thank you. <laughs> and, 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 and held up very well with all the others that were on the cover that were 20. <laughs> thank you so much. And so you started out with horses, worked your way through a giant gorilla, and wound up in the water in Florida in, with alligators. Right, right. That was that was uh, um, in the Barefoot Mailman, and uh, uh, that was uh, scary when I look back on it because I didn't know that the, the alligators' tails are so dangerous, mm -hmm. and they had their snouts wired but not their tails, and I have to fall in the water in in uh, 1890 clothes and, and my feet were all tangled up in the petticoats and I had to swim to shore and the tails were going like this and Hal Wallace called up and screamed send that girl home what are you allowing her to do this for you know she could be killed but the Seminole Indians were so impressed they made me a, uh, a, a junior Seminole or whatever and allowed me to go back into the swamps and see the corn dance and I've lo just loved the Seminoles ever since. Gee, the days have changed. You basically did your own stunts. Today they would have sent someone else in. Oh, yes. But, you know, at that time, I don't know now, but the Seminole Indians had never signed a peace treaty with, at that time with, the, with uh, uh, America. I'm sure but they have by now. I don't know. They've been making the papers a lot lately. <laughs> they think they can have any kind of gambling they want. The state of Florida says, anyway, it's another. Oh, that's interesting. A lot of interesting. politics going on. Yeah. I think it'll go on forever. Probably. Well, they, they, I guess they're doing all right now, right, with all the gambling? Yeah, the gambling, yes. Uh, they, I think they do very well. But they uh, don't take care of each other's tribes. I, I question it because I sent, excuse me for interrupting. Sure, you know, please do. But the, this subject will fleet away, and I will not have my two cents. But nowadays, the, the one tribe will be starving to death, and the others uh, with, uh, you know, the gambling has seen us going full blast, making millions. I said, well, why don't they help the ones that are starving? I'm sending them money. I haven't got any money, but I'm sending them money, and they all, I don't understand it, but one tribe apparently does not interact with another. Isn't that a shame? That is a shame. Yeah, well, I know that. that no, I did not know that. I think it's awful, but I, you're right. I know that some are very poor. I think the Navajos are very poor. There's a lot of them that yeah. are very poor. Yeah, yeah. And they're not being helped by their rich. The Paiutes and the... Mm -hmm. Well, I was told that the Mohawk Mohegans, who have a big casinos up in New England, uh, loaned money to the Seminoles so they could start their casinos, and they... Uh, you probably have a piece of it, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Annie's right. They all should help one another. Well, they learned capitalism very well. I'm yeah. Sure. <laughs> like, I know in my church that we really always help each other. I mean, nobody goes poor. No, nor in mine. No. That, that, that's, yeah, that's the way it should be. You know, an individual can't feed the world, mm -mm. can't feed the country, can't even feed their city. But you can try it if a little bit helps. You know. I know. Judy, my assistant, just gets after me. She says, if you adopt one more African child, but every time they show on television another child starving to death, I send in my money. You know, I mean, I sit there crying. Oh, it's just awful. Well, it's wonderful that people are doing that. Africa, of course, is coming along so well right now. It's, it's oh, yeah. advancing, and, and uh, I understand that practically everyone in Africa has a cell phone, <laughs> even if they don't know, even if they don't have a bank account. And oh, but they're so there. poor yet, that, you know. Those children they show that on television with the scabies and the swollen stomach, the little tiny legs. I mean, and and the AIDS. I mean, uh, and uh, their their parents are all dead, and the grandparents are the or the six-year-old is taking care of the babies. You know, it's awful. Don't say any more, I'll send money. I know. <laughs> I know, Annie. <laughs> yeah, so sad. So well, sad. I, 
from what I see by reading your, your biography, that you made two movies in 2005. So I guess neither of you have any intention of ever retiring. No, Somebody no. Somebody gives you a job. Not as long as I can move. That's right, you know. I remember. So what, yeah, 2005, remember. do you have anything in the works that you give us a little secret that's coming out next year or something? Or? Yes, uh, I'm doing a movie uh, that I will also probably be made partly in Florida. Uh, that is called, um, uh, what is it, Rikers Island, uh, uh, Swimming, Swimming in Rikers Island. And, and it's a wonderful uh, story. And my, my son is going to do the script, Grant Kramer, and I've just read it, and it's just fantastic. And when I get back in this month in March, I'm doing a, the uh, Elizabeth in Essex, Elizabeth the Queen. I'm playing Queen Elizabeth at the uh, Stella Adler Theater, and then I'm going to do it at the Actors Studio, which, which is just a big job, and I am loving playing Queen Elizabeth. Oh, just loving it. Excellent. Um, okay, now I would like maybe if you could do me a favor. Yes. Could you introduce Anne? Oh. For, oh. Me, for me, and tell us a little bit about that. Well, let, yeah. let me tell you something. Anne has done so much, as they say. She started at five years old. My late husband, all he said was, Terry, I, you know, of course he thought I was beautiful because he was married to me, but he said, one woman that is, I have to say, and I know you won't be hurt, is more beautiful than you. The most beautiful woman in the entire world is Anne Jeffries. And every time he'd see her, he'd say, you are the most beautiful girl in the whole world. And I sit and I, I, I'm stunned always by her beauty. And it's inner, it's inner. No, and and her career, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> and, and, and you know she hasn't had a lot of surgery. She pulls her hair straight back and she's got a natural, beautiful face. And she's beautiful from the inside out. And her career spans so many years. I saw her opening night on Broadway when she did Kiss Me Kate. She not only sang Kiss Me Kate on Broadway, but did the road show. And she can sing La Boheme and Tosca and her beautiful husband, who she did Topper with. And then she played the mother to, on, um, on, with, uh, to David Hasselhoff on, uh, Baywatch. on Baywatch. You tell all your, because you know oh, what you've done better than I have. But You're embarrassing me. Well, I, I would be embarrassed too if I were that beautiful. <laughs> well, it's interesting that both of you have a And she flew here herself to, to introduce pages. me tonight. Which I will always be so Have grateful for. Have you ever seen the Tampa Theater yet? Pardon? Have you ever been to the Tampa Theater? No. It's one of those few grand old beautiful theaters. It was built in 1926, and it's all completely restored with all the gargoyles and the tiles, and it's just an experience to see it. And it's good that some cities have saved their old theaters. You know, too many of them oh, have yes. the wayside. I so know. So it's a beautiful environment. Just as beautiful. Isn't like this something this, yes. this was built. Hundred years ago too. And it's oh, it's restored. beautiful. Tampa was very good about preserving, pres keep preserving a lot of things. Yeah. Where cities like St. Petersburg have turned. Well, we down. just loved Tampa. What we saw last night, walking along the old streets and everything, it was just lovely. Annie, you've got to tell it. Turn on to Annie now because she's had such a career. Oh, well, she started out. It seems uh, on the, on doing a, several movies and then switched over and did an awful lot of television, which yeah. is haven't you? Yes, I did a lot of Broadway too. That's a lot of Broadway I and, 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 and have uh, record albums. And but I had done almost 30 movies before I went to uh, New York to do opera and then to do Broadway. So I'm sort of an alligator switching my tail there from one to the other. <laughs> well, you've done, it, you've done everything. Well, uh, no, I is. didn't do vaudeville and I didn't do burlesque. You didn't jump out of an airplane? No, 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 no. no. But, yeah. Uh, I did a lot of things. Did your date Howard Hughes? We won't go into that. <laughs> <laughs> she probably did. I'm sure you did. <laughs> I, if she didn't, she's the only one who didn't. <laughs> Until I, I ran faster than he did. <laughs> Until I read your, through your book and, and, and oh, watched dear. this uh, it was a bad wonderful boy. video that you made, The Passions of Howard Hughes. I never realized that Howard Hughes dated everybody. Uh, so. And then some. <laughs> and then some. <laughs> I didn't think he would have time with all of his work he was doing. He was kind of bovey long. I remember when he crashed into the, air, the rooftop there on Whittier, and uh, 
everybody, of course, was so upset about it, because he was a wonderful personality in our world. And uh, they were talking about all the girls that dashed to the hospital. You name them. Lana, Ava, all down the line. They would line up to get to, you probably... I didn't know him yet. Oh. I, no, I didn't meet him until... No, I didn't meet him until three years later. But all the glamour girls in Hollywood, except moi, rushed to the hospital to see him and make sure that he was still there. Oh, Gene was Peters was there, too. Oh, they were all there, darling. Yeah. You started at, what, four years old? No, I, I sang the first time uh, when I was five. And uh, my mother had me uh, coaching, vocal coaching, because she found out when I was like six months old, she was playing the Victrola record we had in those days that she wound up way back then. And mm. uh, she, when she cut it off and went out of the room to do something, when she came back, this little six months old was standing up. I was very precocious, standing up in the crib, hanging on to the side, going da 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 da, whatever the song was that she had been playing. And I think it was something that Caruso was singing. Oh, my favorite. So she said the fact that uh, a young child whose vocal cords are not really coordinated at that particular age, she said, ah, oh, nice singer, because she wanted to be a singer. She learned to sing before you learned to talk. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, yes. So that started me, you know. She coached me, had me coached, and I started singing in public when I was five. And I sang at everything, the Junior Chamber of Commerce, the whatever meeting, whatever there was in town that they needed somebody to entertain. Mother had me singing. And uh, it was a great experience for me. I got me started, and I was never afraid. The kids aren't afraid anyway. They don't know fear yet. <laughs> so I'm always at home on the stage, and I love it. And that's and uh, then you switched out to movies. What would you do with your first movie? Well, actually, uh, my first movie was with Jeanette McDonald and Nelson Eddy. Oh. I Married an Angel. Mm. And I had been in love with Nelson since I was knee-high to a, a goose, too, because my grandmother had taken me to see all their movies when they came to my hometown of Goldsboro, North Carolina. And uh, so I had, you know, Nelson Eddy. And when I was on the set, I was... <laughs> I couldn't talk. I was 17, and this man was so charismatic. He, he was not like he was on the stage, I mean, in films. Mm. You know, he's very stoic, stout, hard, and men. And, but in person, he was gay, he was funny. I'll take that back. He was funny. He was light. He was uh, 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 very personable, uh, very opposite from what he was. Mm. Uh, in films. I loved him from and, the screen. Uh, so I was telling somebody just today, I said, well, the last day of the film, or the last month of the film, he came over to me. I was sitting in the dressing, at the dressing table with my hair rolled up in curls, and, and uh, he came dancing over. He was doing the Mikado, something from the Mikado that he was just having fun with. And he came tap dancing over to me, and he said, photographer, oh, cameraman, here, still man. And he came up and he said, I'd like to take a picture here with a quiet one. And in those days, I was quiet. I had such a heavy southern accent that I just kept my mouth shut, you know, and, and I was shy anyway. So with a quiet one, I said, it was the last time anyone ever said I was quiet. But uh, he took the picture, and at the end of the film, he presented it to me in a silver frame, an 8 by 10 photograph of the two of us. And it said on there, to the most beautiful girl in the world, from her adoring slave, Nelson Eddy. Oh. Do you oh. know, I still have that picture. Oh, I would too. faded a little bit. He sits oh. on my piano today. So that was my first film. What a nice experience. Yes, it was. It was wonderful. Oh, it makes you want to do it over and over. Oh. Yes. You I was in love with Eddie. Nelson Eddy too. I think we all <laughs> oh, were. Yes. Mm, wonderful. Mm. I'm sure that both of you are us to played roles where you acted with the same male lead. Oh, I was Different in love times. with Tyrone Power and then I played opposite him and I'm not over it yet. Oh, that must have been terrible to do, you know. Oh, you have to kiss him? oh yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I and usually didn't get to kiss the leading man and I usually lost him in the end to the other girl. Oh, I, oh, I, I think I always got the leading man mm -hmm. and I always got to kiss him. And of course, Glenn Ford had been one of my favorites, and Tyrone Power. I mean, I never, because, you know, when you're 12 to 15, 
years old and you see these men and they're grown up on stage, you're a child, you never think you'll ever grow up and play opposite them, do you? Mm. And, and it seemed like every man I fell in love with, I'd end up playing opposite him. And all I had, and, and well, every year for the last 50 years, this year was 50 years since, how, since Tyrone died, I've been at his memorial and spoken. And I even went on stage at the Egyptian, was there because, uh, well, you knew Caesar, Caesar Romero, Romero, who yeah. is his closest friend. Well, Caesar was so in love with, with Tyrone. Well, anyone who ever kn knew him was. Yeah. I mean, he was the kindest man I've ever known. My mother and daddy used to say, you're as beautiful, Tyrone, in the inside as you are the outside. I've never known a more spiritual, kind man in my life. He was beautiful. Uh, we, we adored him. Did you know him, Anne? Yes. Did you, Not didn't as you? well as you did. Yeah. He was she married all the ones that she fell in love with. That's, yeah. That's a difference. And you got to dance with... Uh, <laughs> Fred Astaire. Astaire. I danced with I Fred Astaire. Oh, I knew good. One, one that you oh, both. which one? I did Daddy Longlegs. Which one did you? Well, I didn't do a film. I did a... Was it a Battlestar Galactica? Or a, one of those uh, space things. And we had to do a dance on a, a space nightclub. And it was very difficult for him because, he, as you know, he liked to rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. He was a perfectionist. He would rehearse eight hours a day. And this was just, he kept saying, don't show my feet because we were in a crowded nightclub in outer space somewhere. And I was Princess Cyrus or some such thing. And uh, the, the, the dance consisted of doing things like... And he kept saying, uh, um, uh, which, 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 I said, just wherever I put my hand up, hit it, you know? So <laughs> he was not too happy with that, nor was I, because it didn't show our feet. And he just would not, he, he, well, he said, people expect me to really go into a big dance, of which he was very right, you mm -hmm. know? You expect Ty, uh, Mr., what's the Sam Moses name? Uh, Fred Astaire, Mr. Astaire. I'm teasing. He's a, a, such a perfection. But he was wonderful, and he, he Sweet knew man. his lines. Now, he was 90-something. He knew his lines. He knew exactly what he was going to do in the scenes. There again, he's a perfectionist. He was. He was a sweet so man, I can, too. I can say, laughingly, that I danced with Tyrone. With, I'm going back to Tyrone again. Hello, Tyrone. Are you Hello. Here? Um, but uh, it, it was something I put on my uh, itinerary of things that I have done. Dance with Fred Astaire. I don't know. Excellent. And you made a movie when with Jimmy Durante. Yes. He was the only picture he ever starred in, and I co-starred with Jimmy Durante. And uh, it was called uh, The Great Rupert, and they colorized it and everything, and, and now call it A Christmas Story. But he was wonderful to work with. In I'm, that movie, he's a sweet man. oh, wasn't he a sweetheart? Mm -hmm. When I grew up, I knew him as the old guy playing the piano with the big nose, and he was a comedian. Yeah. But he, he in made between lots every of, scene, he was playing the piano, and he had a big nose. <laughs> and he had a big nose. Uh, I thought I had the poster here, but he looks so young and so different in the poster. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Was he fun to work with? Oh, he was. But you know, he was fun to work with. But he. He had his cronies around him, so between every scene, he was at the piano pounding it away singing. So that was the best part between, between the takes. When you work with a comedian, that's the best part. I was very close to Bob Hope. Were you? I knew him well. I loved him. Yeah. He was just wonderful. I loved Hope. And uh, uh, I traveled with him. I'm sure Annie did, too. No, as a matter of fact, I was asked to go with those Christmas things that mm -hmm. you probably went mm -hmm. on. And at that time, my mother would not allow me to go out of the country. It was a war on, you know, and she said no. So I, I uh, spent my time doing hospitals and U uh, USO shows all around the country, but I was not allowed to go overseas. Well, I was told by a local stuntman, Jerry Allen, that he saw you with Bob Hope in Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, was he remembering? Oh, way? yeah. I, uh, I'll tell you, I was so crazy about him. and He was wonderful to, to the end. I mean, I got... I just, I just dreaded the year that I wouldn't get his Christmas card, and it finally came. But one of the last Christmas cards, you know, he's quite old by that time. He had a very young picture of him and Dolores on the, on the front of his Christmas card, and he said, this is our most recent picture. 
<laughs> which I thought was so funny because he was very old by that time. And he had this very young picture on, the, on, the, on his Christmas card. I mean, he, he was just funny all the time. Do you have uh, any other story that you want to tell that I haven't been smart enough to ask the right question about? Annie, what about you? Oh, I have a whole book yet, but yes. I won't go into that. I mean, you could keep us here Are all day. Are you still singing? Yes, I do concerts here, there, and yon. Can we get one one line? Get one a concert? <laughs> no, not a concert. Just <laughs> a, 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 a verse. Okay. Hello, young lovers, whoever you are. I hope your trouble will stop you. That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> you haven't lost it in all these years. That's good. Well, That's it's not as as strong as it used to be. You know, to come from an opera singer. Uh, to a Broadway stage show. I did um, Kurt Weill's street scene, the first one, I mean, the original. And then go from that to what? That was a show written for me. This was the time she was marrying Howard. I was working my tail off on Broadway and loving it. I loved it. I did, I think it was five straight shows, you know, with a year, two years each. Uh, and that was really a very important part. Of it. I met my husband on Broadway. Married him, so that was a good thing too, and I still do shows now and then. Now, for the younger people who are very familiar with Baywatch, <laughs> you didn't sing on Baywatch, did you? No, I played I played his mother, and it was very nice. Uh, I did, I think I did five episodes, and uh, I found him to be a lovely young gentleman, with wonderful manners, easy to work with, uh, as nice as he could be in this recent thing that he got into, I don't understand that at all. Because that's not the young man that I worked with and knew and respected and loved. Uh, but it was fun. I enjoyed doing Baywatch. I wish it was still going. I get residuals from uh, Slavovia and all sorts of places over in Europe because he's very big of it, particularly in Germany. But um, it was an experience, another one that I loved. Uh, and you haven't mentioned Topper. Maybe some of the younger people have oh, seen yes. that. Oh, yes. I've seen that several times. It, it seems you can watch that movie over and over, and it never gets old. Well, it isn't dated, you know. I was a big fan of the movies, Topper. There were Me two too, of them. both of them. Yeah, there were two of them. There's Cary Grant and Connie... Uh, Connie uh, Con Constance Bennett. Constance Bennett and Roland Young uh, were the original ones. So Robert and I were playing at the Sands in Las Vegas. We had a nightclub back. And my husband, Robert Sterling, by the way, uh, and uh, they called and asked us, would we be interested in doing a television version of Topper? And I said, oh, yes, yes. And Robert said, yes, because I guess he had seen the films years ago and loved them too. So uh, that started our, we finished our nightclub act uh, and came to Los Angeles and we're playing the Coconut Grove. Uh, mm. and while we were playing the Coconut Grove, we shot the pilot during the day. And then we went, we went to the Fairmont in San Francisco. And while we were at the Fairmont, they called and said, cancel the rest of your tour. The, the uh, pilot has been sold, the fastest selling. It says it's not even out of the can practice, it's still wet. And so we canceled our rest of our tour and came back and started the top of series. It was marvelous. And you know, one of our writers was Sondheim. Really? Yeah. Mm. yeah we kept him locked in the closet, typing away. Mm. <laughs> so the rather sophisticated things you get in there, I guess, came from uh, Sondheim. The good thing about having 300 channels on your TV is that all of this stuff can be continuously played, so everybody can, can see it. The young people today, I'm finding people in their 20s and 30s are just in love with the stuff from, from that was made 40 and 50 years ago and before, yeah. and, they, and they they just talk about the quality. It's, it's not the same today. No. Mm -hmm. They make wonderful movies today, but it's not the same. No. The glamour has, seems to have gone. And even the humor has changed too, you know. What humor we had that was a little bit uh, questionable was double entendre, so it didn't really say what they say today. You know, sometimes I go, oh, my gosh, so they say that on television? Or they do that on television? I also spent quite a few years doing General Hospital. And uh, boy, I tune in on that today and I don't know anybody. And the things they do on the screen, I think, hmm, hmm, hmm. 
wouldn't have done that in my day. I wouldn't have done it anyway. So I'm a prude. Huh. So. Oh, we're all prudes. <laughs> all of us born in, in the 20s are so prudes. prudes. Uh, one thing, I w don't want to forget, I want to thank the Don Vicente in for their contribution and Josh Patton for, you know, for their contributions that were here. And uh, the film festival, again, for bringing us here. Oh, I'm delighted to be here. Yes. You know, what you were saying about uh, um, who did you play opposite uh, in, uh, the, how nice he was that the, you were just talking about. Hasselhoff. Hasselhoff. He offered to do a cameo in our movie, Beverly Hills Brats. I just never found anybody sweeter. I so agree with you. I mean, did he do it for you? Well, we didn't have any place for him to do it, or he would have, but he offered to. And I thought he was so kind Such and a sweet. Nice young man. A I lovely know person. All that mess. I know. And as far as I know, he never took a drink, so. I know. I never saw that either. So there, David, that's for you, sweetheart. Yes. Mwah. We love you, David. <laughs> well, I was just handed a book. Yes. With that's says, my How do you stay so young? This is my new book that just came out. Yeah, I've been finding out things about her that I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have to talk to you later. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's what I learned from all the stars I ever worked with. And I've worked with Mary Pickford. And I, so it goes all the way back to Mary Pickford right up to John Travolta, moving through Cary Grant, uh, uh, John Wayne, all these people. John Wayne and Cary Grant went on my honeymoon with me, and John Wayne was oh. the best man at my wedding, That's one of my weddings. <laughs> Wedding. What the one to <laughs> Jean McGrath, which is oh yeah, you, you have maybe well, maybe I haven't know, gotten that far. Mm -hmm. Did you we'll know him? Talk, no, 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 okay, no, I, I missed that one. Thank okay, you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't. I don't think I knew you yet. No, you didn't. <laughs> but uh, I'm it's a big tease, so you have to. Oh yeah, and I love to be teased. <laughs> <laughs> so this book has just come out. Yes, it and has. It's in print, it's and everybody yes. should run to the store and yes. buy a copy. Yes. yes, yes. It's very interesting. I just got a copy of it, and I've started reading it upstairs in the hotel here. I put a copy on her doorstep this morning, so she's it's reading very it. Very interesting. Very. But good. It, but it it really is because you get to know people quite intimately. You know, in the book, I there's Ingrid Bergman. There's oh, I I have stories uh, also on uh, Audrey Hepburn, uh, Princess Grace, and. Uh, Jackie Kennedy and we were all born in 29 the same year and of course they're gone I'm still here but I learned a lot from them because they all had great style as Annie does hmm. there's another there. person that was born in 29 yes that I was watching last Sunday on television Ooh. and she Barbara Walters oh is she born 29 she was born in December of 1929 yeah, wow Wow, I'm born and in January. She's still working every week and doing yes. a wonderful job. Yes. Well, my agent called me to do uh, uh, a big television show just that I was coming here. And every time I get on a plane to go any place, my agent calls me for a sh show. I was the last time with a show called Greek. They're supposed to be very good. It always happens. I think they wait to leave town. Yeah, I think they know. They somehow know you're leaving town. What one of those with the three initials C R or C? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it is. C yeah. C I S I C S I. Yeah. Yeah. There's C S I. I think Miami and C S I New mm -hmm. York, and they, mm -hmm. when, when they got a hit, they sort of like put it all over the place. Right. Right. Exactly. So you you're going to be doing that in Florida? Well, no. They they called me when I get a call when I'm on the plane to come back and do one, and I couldn't. I I said I'm on the plane, and the stewardess said, "Will you turn your phones off?" <laughs> It always happens when I get on a plane to go any place. I get a call for it because I, I love to do guest appearances. I hope soon I'm going to do a guest appearance on Two and a Half Men. I just am in love with that show. Do you ever watch it, Annie? It's uh, one of no. the funniest shows. Oh, gosh. Uh, very, I've watched very little situation comedy. You well, I have, like that, I have never watched one. And somehow I watched it this summer. I didn't know it had been on for six years. Ooh, and it's, really? it's, it's, uh, they do reruns from seven to eight in California, and I can't miss it. And everyone knows they don't call me between seven and eight. And then the new one is on Monday at nine o'clock on a different channel. But it is so funny, and all, it's the best writing I've ever seen on television. Yeah, maybe I'll have to watch it. Yeah.
you 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 will love it. <laughs> we'll have to watch it when she's on anyway. And the woman who plays the mother, I've got I should remember her name because she is wonderful. Just a wonderful actress. I'm sure you know her name. She's probably very famous. Oh, I don't know anybody's name, so don't count on that for me. No. I don't remember yesterday. <laughs> I remember yours. You're, you're Terry Moore. <laughs> and you're Ed <Aunt> Jeffries. <laughs> you both worked in Hollywood all those years and didn't actually meet there. She was in New York so much of the time. Yeah. On, on the and, stage, and then, yes. and then you, you know, we were under contract. I was under contract for 21 years. I was under contract to Eagle Lion, seven years, Columbia for seven years, and then 20th Century Fox for, you know, seven years. So if you're in a contract to Warner Brothers, you don't meet the people at no. Fox. No. You know, you were probably, which, which studio well, were you I with? I started out in Metro, and I wound up at Republic, and then I wound up at RKO. Yeah, and even though Howard had RKO, I was just borrowed there once for a movie there. So you see, we different studios, it's like different states. Well, di studios in those days were like a family. Mm -hmm. You know, they taught you acting, they took care of your fan mail, they even would put in the paper you were without with so-and-so, and you never even met them. This was all part of the, the, the way that they did things. Now, there are no studios, and the young people are scattered all over the place, and they only know each other from bars and nightclubs, and what the paparazzi puts out about them. It's a mm -hmm. shame. No, we had a, a we community. were friends. We had a community. We had communities, yep. and and we had fan magazines that were flattering instead of all these magazines like the Enquirer and everything that say bad things about you. They only said good things about you. They built you up, and and for instance, all the kids in Hollywood we'd get together. I mean, every weekend there was yeah. Roddy McDowell, Jane Powell, Elizabeth Taylor, myself. We'd all get together and and we're we're friends. We'd we have would parties and play games. Yeah, and yeah, swim, 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 swim together, everything like that. Yeah, we were all buddies and friends. Oh dear, the good old days. We played together. And we stayed together. Yes. Too. We did. And you're still traveling together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And sharing the trip to Florida. Yes. Yes. Um, Annie, uh, it's, it's interesting that I wasn't friends with Annie back then, and I've become very good friends with Jane Russell. And Jane and Annie and I are all good friends now. And and and. Jane and I, she was Howard Hughes' star, I was his wife, we both married Heisman Trophy winners, we were both, uh, who, uh, who both played for the Rams, so we have a lot in common. She was just with me last weekend, and we usually all go, Annie didn't go this time, to, but the last the four Academy years Awards. we've gone to the Academy Awards together. Mm -hmm. We all go together. Yeah, we have a good time. We but have see, a good time. I didn't marry uh, a, a, a millionaire, I didn't marry a football player. You do all those wonderful things you do. I just married one man for 54 and a half years. I See, it was better. An actor, though. Yeah, yeah. and I, the funny thing is I never dated an actor. Well, I told him when I'm, my mother said, now this is a man you should marry. And I said, an actor? No way. He, was special. Yeah, he, he was, was special. Yeah, he was special. And handsome, too. He was a good well, father, 54 years good man. You've done a wonderful job. And a half. 54 and a half. Yeah. I was married almost that long if you put them all together. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you well, believe in variety, I do. Right, well, I would like to thank you all. Thank for you. For doing this interview. I'm sure that the people will enjoy it very much. And thank you for coming to Florida. And I hope, looking forward to seeing you introduce Terry tonight. And, and I want to thank Annie again. I love her so much for doing that. Oh, God love you. Thank you. I miss it for you, honey. She's a good lady. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. So Barbara was born in 29. I didn't December know that. 1929. Yeah. You didn't read her book then? No, I, I want to read it, though. That was sort of shocking, that affair, wasn't it? <laughs> With the senator. Oh, well. No, nothing shocks me No, I, I know. Not anymore. <laughs> she's just had more facelifts, Barbara. Oh. <laughs> God, she's had a lot. <laughs> I heard that uh, they're talking about getting rid of her. Uh, really? I heard that for... Oh, you mean on on the the new the show that she's on now, View, yeah. on View. Yeah. Hmm. She leave her alone. I mean, let's keep the old ones around.